Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. It's 18 days ago into GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to be looking at the topic of completing the square. So we've looked at how to factorise quadratics and how to solve the quadratics using the factorisation. We've looked at how to use the, uh, the quadratic formula to solve quadratics as well. Today we're going to be looking at how to write quadratics in a different form by using completing the square and how that form can be really useful for solving quadratics and also for even being able to find out things like the equation of the line of symmetry of a quadratic or even the coordinates of the minimum or maximum point of the quadratic and things like that. So today we're going to be looking at completing the square and we're going to be looking at some questions that involve completing the square as well. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at completing the square. So sometimes we're asked to write quadratics such as x squared plus 8x plus 1 in the form of x plus a close bracket squared plus b. Okay, so we're going to open up our brackets and we're going to put x. Okay, now we're going to have a look at the term in the middle, this plus 8x. And we're going to look at that coefficient of x. So here we've got 8 plus 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to half that. So half of 8 is 4. So we're going to put plus 4 inside the brackets. So to get the number inside the bracket, what we're going to do is we're going to half the coefficient of x. So in this case, it's plus 8x. So we half that, that 8 to be 4. So is plus 4. And then we've got our squared. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take away this number squared. So 4 squared is 16. So we're going to do minus 16. And then we're going to put the number on the end. So here we had plus 1. So we put plus 1. Now we just need to simplify this. We need to get it in this form. So we've got x plus 4, close bracket squared. We had negative 16 and we're adding 1. So we're going to go back at 1. So it'll be negative 15. And that's it. So we've got x squared plus 8x plus 1. And we're asked to write it in this form. So when we do completing the square, we get x squared plus 4, close bracket squared, subtract 15. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this is one for you to try. It says write x squared minus 10x plus 9 in the form of x plus a close bracket squared plus b. So we want to do completing the square on this. So feel free to press pause now and to write this in this form. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our brackets and we're going to put our x. Then we look at our x term and we look at the coefficient of x, which is negative 10 or minus 10. And we're going to half that. And half of minus 10 is minus 5. So minus 5 close bracket squared. Now we take away whatever we get when we square this number. So minus 5 squared, well, minus 5 times minus 5 is 25. So we're going to take away 25. We always take away what we get when we square this number. Negative 5 squared is 25, so we take away 25. And then finally, we put the number on the end. We've got plus 9, so we then write plus 9. And now we just need to simplify this. So we'd have x minus 5 close bracket squared. And then we've got minus 25 plus 9. Well, if we go back up 9, that'll bring us to minus 16, to so be minus 16. So we've got x minus 5, close bracket squared, minus 16. So we've done completing the square. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. And as I said previously, completing the square can be really useful if you want to solve quadratic equations. So here we've got solve x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0 using completing the square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this one, and then there's one for you to try after. So if we had x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0, well, we're going to do completing the square on this left-hand side. So we'd have open up our brackets and write x. The coefficient of the x term is 4, so we then half that, so it'll be plus 2, close bracket squared. We then take away this number squared, 2 squared is 4, so we're going to take away 4, and then we've still got our plus 1, so plus 1 equals 0. Now let's simplify this, so we'd have x plus 2, close bracket squared, and then negative 4 plus 1, that's going to be negative 3 or minus 3 equals 0. Now we want to solve this, so what we're going to do is we want to find out what the x is, so we're going to add 3 to both sides, so let's add 3 to both sides, so add 3 to the left hand side and add 3 to the right hand side, so that'll give us x plus 2, close brackets, squared, we had minus 3, we're adding 3, so it becomes 0, so then that just disappeared, equals, and 0 plus 3 is 3. Okay, so we've now got x plus 2, close bracket squared, equals 3. So we want to get rid of this squared. I just want to show you something, that if we had, for instance, x squared equals 25, if we were to solve this equation, we would get that x equals plus or minus 5, because obviously 5 squared is 25, but also negative 5 squared is 25. So here, when we've got something squared equals 3, whenever we get rid of the squared, we'd have x plus 2, but we're going to have a positive and negative solution here. And the square root of 3 is root 3, so we'd have plus or minus root 3, because obviously root 3 squared is equal equal to 3, and negative root 3 squared would be equal to 3. And just to show you that that's very important that you'd have plus or minus the square root of 3, and not just root 3, you'd have plus or minus, because obviously a positive squared is a positive, but also a negative squared is a positive. That's important whenever you're doing these completing the square questions. Okay, then finally, we want to get the x on its own, so we want to get rid of this 2, so we're going to take away 2 and take away 2. So on the left-hand side, that's quite straightforward, you just have x. And on the right-hand side, we're going to take away 2 from this, but actually rather than writing plus or minus root 3, 
takeaway two. I'm actually going to put the takeaway two or the minus two in the front. So I'm going to have minus two and then I have plus or minus the square root of three. So whenever I'm solving quadratics using completing the square, rather than putting the plus or the minus number on the end after the plus or minus, whatever it would be, I'd actually put it in front of the plus or minus. Okay, so now we've got x equals minus two plus or minus the square root of three. So now we've got two solutions to this quadratic. We're going to get that x equals minus two plus the square root of three or, or and x equals minus 2 minus the square root of 3. So there are two solutions. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. This is one for you to try. So can you solve the quadratic x squared minus 6x minus 2 equals 0 using completing the square? So feel free to press pause now and solve this quadratic. Okay, so to begin with, uh, well, let's do completing the square on this left-hand side. So we'd have x, and then we've got minus 6x, so we're going to half the coefficient of x. So the coefficient of x is minus 6, and half in that is minus 3, so minus 3, close brackets, squared. We're then going to take away that number squared. Well, negative 3 squared is 9, so we're going to take away 9. And then we've got minus 2, so minus 2 equals 0. And now we've got minus 9 take away 2, that's minus 11, so we'd have x minus 3, close bracket squared, minus 11 equals 0. And now we want to find out what x is, so let's add 11 to both sides, so add 11 and add an 11 would give us x minus 3, close bracket squared, equals 11. Okay, now we want to get rid of the squared, so we'd have x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 11, because we would square root of 11, but remember it's positive or negative, so we've got plus or minus the square root of 11. And then finally, we want to get rid of this minus 3, so we're going to add 3 and add 3, so on the left-hand side, we'd be left with x, on the right-hand side, we'd have 3, and I put that in front of the plus or minus 3, plus or minus the square root of 11. And now we just need to write out our two answers, so we'd have x equals 3 plus the square root of 11, or x equals 3 minus the square root of 11. And there are two solutions. And if you got those, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Now, as well as being able to solve quadratics by using completing the square, completing the square can be really useful whenever we're dealing with quadratic graphs, and it can help us find the coordinates of the minimum point or maximum points, or even the equations of the line of symmetry and things like that. So here we've got a quadratic graph, y equals x squared minus 12x minus 1, and we want to find the coordinates of the minimum point of that quadratic. So let's do that. So if I wanted to do that, the first thing I would do is I would do completing the square on this right-hand side, so I'm going to get that y equals, and then completing the square here would be in brackets, x, and then half of minus 12 would be minus 6, close bracket squared. We're then going to take away that number squared, so minus 6 squared is 36, so minus 36, and then we've still got our minus 1, so minus 1. And just simplifying this, we give us y equals, and then in brackets, x minus 6, close bracket squared, and then we've got minus 36 minus 1, that's going to be minus 37. So we've done completing the square on this right-hand side. Now we're going to use this to help us find the coordinates of the minimum point. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to think to our transformations of graphs. So if you need to go back to your Corp Master revision cards and get the revision card on transformations of graphs, feel free to get that. If you've got your notes on transformations of graphs, have a look at those now. If you haven't seen transformations of graphs, so I'm going to actually just explain it in a bit now, and it'll be quite useful for you to actually then go and watch the Corp Master videos on transformations of graphs. Okay, now this is a quadratic graph. We've got something squared minus something. So this is is a quadratic graph so let's just think what the y equals x squared graph would look like the y equals x squared graph let's think what that graph would look like so this is our graph of y equals x squared this parabola and the coordinates of its minimum point would be 0 0 the origin so they're the coordinates of the minimum point of this graph but we were asked to find the coordinates of the minimum point of y equals x squared minus 12x minus 1 or whenever we do completing the square it'll be x minus 6 close bracket squared minus 37 so we need to consider where this graph would be and actually our transformations of graphs would help us because if we let this be equal to f of x we've got y equals f of x this graph well we've got a minus 6 inside of the bracket so be y equals f of x minus 6 and then we've got a minus 37 outside so minus 37 so we just need to figure out what effect this would have on our graph and if we think back to our transformations of graphs we've got a minus 6 inside of a bracket well the, what that means is whenever you've got x minus 6 inside of a bracket that would translate the graph six squares to the right so if we look at our quadratic graph here we're going to translate it six squares to the right so we'd move it over there somewhere so that's the graph translated six squares to the right then we've got minus 37 outside of the bracket. And whenever you've got minus 37 outside of the bracket, that's going to translate it 37 squares down. So it translated 37 squares down, so it move it down there somewhere. So we've moved our graph 6 squares to the right and 37 squares down. So that means the coordinates of this point here would be, we've moved it 6 squares to the right, so that'll be 6, and then 37 squares down, so minus 37. So that means the coordinates of the minimum point of this quadratic, the quadratic that we had, or the quadratic we've given in the question, would be 6 minus 37. So 6 minus 37. 
and that's it there the coordinates of the minimum point and just to recap whenever we have our x minus 6 close bracket squared minus 37 well this means we're going to translate it six squares to the right whatever's inside the bracket if it's minus 6 you then translate it six squares to the right if it's minus 1 you move it one square to the right if it says plus 3 you translate it three squares to the left and so on so whatever's inside the bracket is kind of counterintuitive in terms of the translation and then outside the bracket said minus 37 so you then move it down 37 squares if it was for instance plus 14 you'd move it 14 squares up and so on and that's it let's have a look at one for you to try now yourself so this is the question for you to try it says find the coordinates of the minimum point of y equals x squared plus 2x plus 7 so feel free to press pause now and find the coordinates of the minimum point of this parabola Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to do completing the square on the quadratic. So I'd have y equals, and then open brackets, x, and then I would half the number in front of the x. So half of 2 is 1, so plus 1, close brackets, squared. Then I would take away this number squared, 1 squared is 1, so take away 1. And then we've got our plus 7, so plus 7. Okay, so we've got this. Now we just need to simplify this. So we'd have y equals x plus 1 close bracket squared, and then minus 1 plus 7 will be 6, so plus 6. So that's fantastic. We've now done completing the square on the quadratic. So we can now use this to help us find where the coordinates of the minimum point will be. So if we start off by considering the graph of y equals x squared, that's the graph of y equals x squared. We've got a plus 1 inside the bracket, so that would translate the graph 1 square to the left. So 1 square to the left, it would move that way. And then we've got plus 6, it would move it 6 squares up, so it would move it up there somewhere. So then that's what our quadratic would look like. And the minimum point of y equals x squared would be 0, 0. So this point, we've moved it 1 squared to the left and 6 up. So this point would be negative 1, 6. So the coordinates of that minimum point is negative 1, 6. And that's it. So the coordinates of that minimum point is negative 1, 6. And if you got that, well done. And as well as being able to use completing the square to be able to find the coordinates of the minimum and maximum point, it can be really useful to be able to find the equation of the line of symmetry. So if we had the quadratic y equals x squared minus 8x plus 3, and we wanted to find the equation of the line of symmetry, because obviously with it being a U-shaped parabola, a parabola it will have a line of symmetry, a vertical line of symmetry. So it'll be, because it's a vertical line of symmetry, it'll be x equals something. Those vertical lines are x equals 4, x equals 7, and things like that. So if I wanted to find the equation of the line of symmetry of this quadratic, the first thing I would do is I would do completing the square, so y equals and then completing the square, open up our brackets, and then x, and then half of the number in front of the x, half the coefficient of x, half of it minus 8 would be minus 4, close brackets, squared, and then minus 4 squared would be 16, so minus 16, and then we've got plus 3. Okay, now let's simplify this, so we'd have y equals, and then open brackets, x minus 4, close bracket squared, and then minus 16 plus 3 would be minus 13. So we've done completing the square, now we just need to figure out what this graph would look like. Okay, so this is the graph of y equals x squared, and let's consider our transformation as a graph. So we've got a minus 4 inside the bracket, so it's counterintuitive, so instead of moving it 4 squares to the left, it moves it 4 squares to the right, so it move it over that way. And then we've got minus 13, so I'm going to translate it 13 squares down, so it looks something like that. Now we want to find the equation of the line of symmetry, but let's actually just label on the minimum point. Well, we know that's going to be 4 squares to the right, so 4, and then down 13, so minus 13. So the coordinates of the minimum point would be 4 minus 13. Now we want to find the line of symmetry there. The line of symmetry would be a vertical line of symmetry, like so. It's going to pass through the x-axis at 4, so the equation of the line of symmetry would be x equals 4, and that's it. So the equation of the line of symmetry of that quadratic is x equals 4. Okay, let's have a look at a question now for you to try. So we've got find the equation of the line of symmetry of y equals x squared minus 14x plus 7. So feel free to press pause now and find the equation of the line of symmetry of this quadratic. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to write y equals, and then I'm going to do completing the square, so open brackets, x, then half of minus 14 would be minus 7, close bracket squared, minus 7 squared is 49, so we're going to do then minus 49, and then we've still got our plus 7, so plus 7. So we then go y equals x minus 7, close bracket squared, minus 49 plus 7 would be minus 42. So we've now done completing the square. Now what we're going to do is we're going to consider the transformations of graphs. Okay, so this is the graph of y equals x squared. Well, inside of our bracket, we've got minus 7. So that means we're going to translate the graph 7 squares to the right. So 7 squares to the right. And then we've got minus 42. So that means we're going to move it down 42 squares. So we're going to move it down there somewhere. And let's just label on the coordinates of the minimum point. We've translated it 7 squares to the right, so it's going to be 7. And then we've moved it 42 down, so then minus 42. So that's the coordinates of the minimum point. Now we want to find the equation of the line of symmetry of this quadratic. So the line of symmetry would be that vertical line, and it'll pass through the x-axis at 7. So the line of symmetry would be x equals 7. So that's the equation of the line of symmetry. And if you got that, well done.
Okay, and finally, I just want to show you how to deal with a quadratic such as this. So here we've got a quadratic where it's 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. So rather than being x squared, like all the other quadratics we've looked at so far, where that's x squared or 1x squared, in this case, we've got 2x squared. Well, if I wanted to do completing the square on this, one approach that I could use would be to say, well, let's factorize this. And because it's 2x squared, let's take the 2 out. So 2 and then open up brackets. And then if I was to take 2 out here, factorize it, I would have x squared, taking the 2 out. If I had plus 8x, well, taking it, the 2 out, dividing by 2 would be plus 4x. And we had 1, but we're going to divide it by 2, so it would be then plus a half. And let's just check that. If we had 2 bracket x squared plus 4x plus a half, if we would multiply everything by 2, we would get 2 times x squared, which is 2x squared. 2 times 4x, which is 8x, and 2 times a half, which is 1. So we've just taken out our 2 there. So we're now going to do completing the square on what's inside the brackets here. So let's do our 2 and our square brackets, and now to do completing the square. So if I want to do completing the square for this, I would then have open brackets, and then I'd have x. I have plus 4x, well, half of the 4 is equal to 2, so plus 2, and then close brackets, squared. And then take away this number squared, take away 2 squared, it'll be take away 4, and then we've still got our plus a half, so plus a half. So just doing completing the square and what's inside the brackets. And now we let's close our brackets, let's close those square brackets. Now let's simplify this, so we'd have 2, open brackets, so our square brackets, and then we've got x plus 2, close brackets, squared. And then we had minus 4 plus a half, well, minus 4 plus a half would be minus 3 and a half, so minus 3 and a half. Or you could do minus 7 over 2, because 4 is equal to 8 halves. And minus 8 halves plus a half would be minus 7 halves, or minus 3.5. And then close your square brackets. And then finally, we want it in this form, so we just need to expand our brackets. So we're going to do 2 times this and 2 times that. So 2 times this would be 2 bracket x plus 2 close bracket squared, and then minus, and then we're just going to multiply this by 2. Now, 7 halves multiplied by 2 would be 14 halves, and 14 halves would be equal to 7. Or another way to think of it is, this was minus 3.5, well, 2 times 3.5 is 7, so that's going to be minus 7, and that's it. So if you had something in this form, you can take the number in front of the x squared out to begin with, then do completing the square, and then just multiply by the number that you took out again, and then that will give you your answer. Okay, let's have a look at a question for you to try. So we've got, right, 3x squared plus 6x plus 10 in the form of a, open brackets, x plus b, close bracket squared, plus c. So feel free to press pause now and to write this in that form. Okay, so if I want to do completing the square on this, the first thing I notice is it's 3x squared. So I'm going to take the 3 out. So I'm going to do 3 and then a square bracket. And I'm now just going to factorize this. So I'm going to take the 3 out. So divide everything by 3. So 3x squared divided by 3 would just be x squared. And that's what we wanted, an x squared. So we can then use completing the square nicely. And then plus, and we're dividing this by 3. So that'd be 2x. And then plus, and then we had 10. We're dividing it by 3. So I'm just going to write 10 over 3. And then close brackets. So I've taken out the 3, and we've got x squared plus 2x plus 10 over 3. Now we're going to do completing the square on this. So we're going to ignore the 3, and we'll just do 3, open brackets, and let's do completing the square. So that'll be open up our brackets. We've then got x plus, and then half of 2 is 1, so plus 1, close brackets squared. And then we're going to take away this number squared, take away 1 squared, so it's minus 1. And then we've got plus 10 over 3, so plus 10 over 3, close brackets. Now we just need to simplify this, so we've got 3 and then open brackets, x plus 1, close brackets, squared. So, and then we've got minus 1 plus 10 over 3. I'm just going to go over here, minus 1 plus 10 over 3. Well, minus 1 would be minus 3 thirds plus 10 over 3. Minus 3 thirds plus 10 thirds would be equal to 7 thirds, so that would be 7 thirds. So this would be 7 thirds, so plus 7 thirds and then close brackets. And now we just need to multiply everything by three, so that'll be three, and then our bracket, x plus one, close bracket squared. And then we've got seven thirds multiplied by three. Well, seven thirds multiplied by three, which is three over one. Seven times three is 21, and three times one is equal to three, and then that'll be just 21 divided by three is seven, so it'll just be equal to seven. So that'll be then just plus seven. I'm thinking about it, if you have seven divided by three, and then you multiply by three, it'll just be seven, and that's it. So we've written in that form, and if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at completing the square. I really hope you found it useful. I hope you've tried the questions as we've gone through. And if you need any extra practice, in the description below, I've got a link to the practice questions. If you've got the Code Math Revision cards, the card on completing the square, card number 92, will be really useful one for you as well. So well done. You're doing really well going through these videos. I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock for the next one on YouTube. And one thing I just want to ask is, if you've got any friends or family who might be studying for their GCSE maths exams and haven't heard of or started these videos, you could share these 100 days to go videos with them and that would hopefully boost their confidence and stuff as well. We're getting ready to go into the exams. They could perhaps watch them like a big box set, you know, catch up on all the episodes we've done so far. <laughs> That'd be a bit of a 
bit of a mission. But, um, but feel free to share these videos with them and hopefully that'll help them with their studies as well. And also um, give me a few more views. <laughs> but thanks so much for watching the videos. I really hope you found them useful. If you have found them useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'll see you tomorrow for 17 days to go into GCT Maps again. Cheers. Bye.